today is a very exciting day. We are actually driving up to Rad Industry today to finally get the first start on the Toyota Supra Mark IV. It's already 4 p.m. I spent the first half of the day packing all the orders from the pre-orders that were beach shorts, sweatshirts, all that type of stuff. So if you were someone who got a pre-order a while ago, they just got shipped out today, so that's great news. The reason why we're getting such a late start today is because the guy who does all of my Jay-Z tuning, Danny, can't do it till later tonight, and he's squeezing it in for me. So he's like, I can make it later at night, which unfortunately for me, puts us right through all the traffic to get up there. But I said, I am dying for the Mark IV. I am gonna make it happen. So we're gonna do a full send, drive up to Red Industry today, and meet up with the boys and try to get this 2JZ started. Now in the back, I have our valve cover and I have some miscellaneous pieces that we're still missing. And I actually have the hood in the back of the car. So we might potentially get a very first drive today if everything goes as planned, but I'm not expecting that to happen. That's just a bonus if it does happen. I already got my monster and I got some water for the drive up. Our nav is saying we have two hours to go while sitting in traffic. So I'll keep you guys updated throughout the drive. We're about halfway there. We finally got through all the traffic and it's a beautiful day out here. We're actually driving along the coast right now and this is the drive I take every single time, every time I go up towards LA. The California coast is right here to our left and we're in like the marine base area of Southern California. I also probably won't be using music in my videos for quite a long time. YouTube is going through a crackdown right now on old music and believe it or not, the song Feeling Good, that remix that I've been using for my outro for the last like three years, apparently now is triggering YouTube in the monetization and they're demonetizing like 300 of my videos that have that on the outro. Long story short, while I'm telling you this is more or less I'm working with my YouTube agent to like get that reversed because that's complete crap. YouTube lately has been going through a really big crackdown of like cussing and all this stuff and it's now affecting this channel. So I'm not gonna be putting music in the videos for quite a long time. Hopefully I can get it all squared away and we can get back to using other sorts of music and whatnot. But at the moment, I just don't wanna take any chances. I'm gonna say this every single video until it comes, but I do not have an update yet on the Mark V Supra other than it should be here this week. And just to clarify, no Supras have been delivered on the West Coast. So East Coast has gotten it, Florida's gotten it, then the West has gotten it, but the Western side of the United States has not gotten delivery of theirs yet for random reasons. So we should still be the first one in California, allegedly, to receive a Supra. So I'm still gunning for that title. I could be totally wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is where they did the C8 reveal. It was in Tustin, which is the city that we're in right now. And it was in one of the big abandoned like Air Force hangars. Pretty sure that's it. Like that thing is massive and it goes down like probably 200 yards. And there's two of them. There's one right here and there's one right there. Just thought that was worthy showing because I never knew this was here. And I'm taking a back way to Dan's shop because there's so much traffic and I just found this. Pretty cool. Again, I could be wrong. But I'm pretty sure that's it. Or I might be totally wrong. Because now that I'm closer, it looks a little bit more abandoned than I thought, but it does look really cool nonetheless. I gotta be honest, the last week has been pretty shitty. A lot of mixed emotions, a lot of ups and downs, just a lot of crap going on. And I gotta be honest, seeing this right now, ready to go and getting ready to start it makes me so happy. Genuinely, like I, I feel really happy right now. So I'm really excited to vlog this. Uh, to go over what we went over, to remind you guys, if you don't remember why the car is here, we got the whole we got the whole turbo kit and we got all the stuff ready on the car and we did as much as we could, but there was some required fabrication that uh, we could have done in the shop, but the quality of what would have been done on it, I know isn't gonna be as good as the stuff that Dan could have done. And as you guys know, I always say, Dan is like the Jay-Z God and I only really trust him when it comes to messing with Supras or, or Jay-Zs in general. So I kinda wanna go the extra mile with this car because I love it so much that I wanted to have everything be 10 out of 10. So they fixed up all the fab stuff and put on a, and did a bunch of safety precautions that they do in all their cars in this car just to make sure it was 100% ready to go. Now the moment we've all been waiting for. Oh, it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. So we painted the turbo. I guess it's technically powder coated. The same place where Dan took my turbo on the 350, I told him literally I was like the exact same way, just like gloss black with a little sparkle. Everything else is painted gloss black. And now we can slip this baby back on, which I have to move the oil cap. Do, do me the honors, Dan. The Thank you so much. Oh. Everything is finally together. So some stuff that you guys haven't seen that I bought for the car, which I actually en never ended up showing you guys. This is technically a catch can, is it not? But it takes it from the inside of the... You could call it a catch can or like crank breather or ventilation for the motor. Just like crankcase 
pressure goes over there. Uh, over there. A lot of radium parts on this yeah. car after this build, but everything is now ready to go. So we're waiting on Danny to show up and we're gonna try to get this thing started, which if you guys remember when we did the 2J swap on the 350, like two years ago now, Danny came to our shop and helped get everything loaded up and got everything started. It only took him about an hour or so, so hopefully everything goes as planned. Now if you don't remember what we did to this motor, because I know at this point it was like six months ago. So the motor is a stock bottom end, but it has a built head. So we're running BC parts up top and I believe I know I shouldn't be asking Dan this question because I should know this question but I believe the cams I did were 272s yeah. oh I still remember so this will be the first time I'll hear like a cam to Jay-Z other than your cars which don't count because that's full race car so we should if we get this thing started today we should hear a little bit a lope sound a little bit deeper but we have a built head everything's ready to go and I'm a little nervous but I'm in the hands of the gods of the Jay Z's, so no, I hope. No, I didn't get to put the head on. No, I did that. You did that. I, I did that. That's the deepest portion of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be lying if I but said I wasn't a little called, bit nervous. You called me. And you did it right. I I think I did it right. Don't. We have. Vi I mean, I was like thinking about. I was like, man, I was like, I wonder if I'm not gonna go there. But we did like Facetime. It should be right because you would each step of the way. You're like, what about this? And I was show you. you did it right. I'm sure. It's a Jay Z. I think so. Yeah, I, I think so. <laughs> we took our time with it. Long story short, everything should be. The only thing that Dan didn't do is put the head on and make sure everything was pulled down and all that type of stuff. But I'm pretty sure I did that right. I'm not gonna say pretty sure. I'm confident that, that everything is done right. And if anything goes wrong today, then I'm sure this video is titled something pretty dramatic, which at this point you know it's coming. So hopefully I don't title it something dramatic. So if you guys remember when we tuned the 2JZ, we had Danny do that and he he like helped me do the startup and he did all the dining and all that type of stuff. And I'm not gonna sit here and act like I know all the mad scientist stuff that Danny and Dan both keep talking about as I stare about this. And I gotta be honest, it's like freaking me out because they're like checking all these things, making sure all this previous work that me and Calvin did are right. It's definitely nerve wracking. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't nervous right now. Like I described it, I feel like I'm taking a final and I'm like getting my final grade. No, but like, I'm saying set the cams to where, well, they, we where they belong. The cams. And we'll see the back No, it might not even be off. Like well, this is all my first time going this far into a build, like doing the top, doing a full like head replacement, doing all this type of stuff. And I know the surface level of everything, like the, uh, I know all like the basic information to do it, but when it goes like going into certain de like degrees on the crank pulley and the degrees on the new cam gears that we have, like I just, I don't know. I've never had to do it. I've never had to learn it. I just don't know. I just, I feel like I'm listening to another language right now. Just kind of neat because I feel like I'm out of my element and uh, it's always good to feel like uncomfortable for a little bit and I definitely feel uncomfortable right now. I just want to make that very, very clear. What are the first precautions that you're trying to take right now to get everything started? So because the head's been off of this motor, the most common thing that happens is the timing belt is installed incorrectly. Sometimes the motor starts up just fine. Sometimes it doesn't. But I always gotta take caution. And then the second thing he's doing is stock crank pulleys will be like right on the timing mark for the front cover timing mark that you get to see on the plastic covers on a Jay-Z. But like as you can see this fluid damper is like it says 10 degrees but we're at zero degrees right now. So yeah. he needs to put a different mark there so he knows where zero actually is. Also, as I just noticed that this was in the background of that last shot, does this big brake kit look familiar to anybody? Well, it should because this is used to be ours. This was going to go on this car, but it had no way in hell of fitting on that wheel setup. So rather than doing a whole new wheels because I want to stick with these, I ended up just selling them for how much I paid for them. But I'm glad to see them go on another Supra. And for that matter, it goes on another black Supra that looks very, very identical to mine. These are the fronts. And these are the rears. I'm very jealous of this guy that he now has them, but we'll get something soon for our car. This is why you have someone like Danny. What exactly uh, are you doing? Registering your infinity box. That way we can load in a map and be able to start testing things. I remember when I did this on my 350 and you like were telling me how to do it over text. It took me so long yeah. how to figure <laughs> this out. Like it literally took me days and days and days to be able to figure it out. So as Danny's doing that, Dan is peer pressuring me into drive his practice car Car, which he used at Seattle last week. It's literally the exact same setup as my 350, but just in a Supra. Like our motors are very, very identical. It's complete stock Jay-Z with a single turbo making around 600 
horsepower, literally just like the 350. So Dan's over here, he's like, oh, no one's on the street, you could go rip it. And I'm like, yeah, but like, it's your car. He's like, but you could go rip it. So uh, I think we're gonna go just do a little, little baby send as we wait for Danny to load up the ECU on the Supra. film and drive at the same time so I'm gonna set this camera up on the side of the street I'm not gonna like manji rip it down the street but I'll definitely give it a couple couple of good rips you know that my skill level on the like the scale of being good is like so far down low but even like knowing what I've been in so far and like having those experiences and then matching it just to like going up and down the straight with Dan in that car which is the same capability of my Z it just like blows my mind that there's a whole other dimension of driving that like my body hasn't experienced yet and I just got a small taste of it and it's it's amazing I like definitely I was like I need a water break because because I've been puckering for the last 10 minutes. That was awesome. Dan, thank you for letting me drive your car, and Dan, thank you for giving me a rip in your car and giving it the real juice. Meanwhile, Danny's still doing things on the computer, and uh, hopefully it's ready soon. It happened. It was amazing. The first sound of life. Fans work? Fans yeah. work. They don't sound like ultra powerful, but... Uh, yeah, this thing was pulsing. Oh, dude, testing all kinds of fancy things. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna keep the email. Yep. Danny, how'd the checklist go? It went well. Only one issue, but we solved it really quickly. It was just a pinning issue or something, just it sounded a, yeah, like? Yeah, just pins in the wrong spot. No big deal. So, turns the key. 
the car should start. Should. This is a very nervous moment. It's like, did find out, did you pass your final? Or did you fail your final? Damn. That was dead. Battery! It's a charger and it's dead. <laughs> Come on, battery. Oh, this is the original battery that came in the car. From Japan. Like, dang Panasonic man. battery. Failed us today. Okay. We'll swap batteries. Let me get a jumper box. New battery in. Test number two. Oh, the car looks so much better in this lighting. Yeah, it might be a dead battery. We'll find out. Yeah, it's at like 12 volts. Oh, yeah. Rip. See what happens. It's running. It works. on because I'm a JDM fanboy and I just wanted to see the lights on. While in the meantime, Joe and Dan are actually doing the important stuff and making sure that coolant level is appropriate. Right now, I'm just enjoying this and my mind is completely elsewhere. It's like it's inhaling and then exhaling. So, so far, my head job hasn't proven to be I think they did a good job. You hear like the ticking? That's what he's worried about, like your backlash being too much and then you hear excessive ticking. You always hear a little ticking on a TJ and this is just about right. Oh, you're talking about the head job of TJ yeah. falling ahead. Yeah, I was talking about well, that, that too. <laughs> okay, I was thinking like way into it. Yeah, you know, no, I didn't even video. explain that in the video, but the machine shop that I took this head to um, was just a random shop that I good reviews online. And Dan and Danny both said it's super, super important that you have a shop that knows what they're doing and knows how to do correct backlash. And they're like, they're saying it needs to be very, very particular. And I was kind of, and, I, and my response was like, well, the shop said it had good reviews and I had friends that have used it, so I wasn't really sure. So initially they were talking about it off camera, but I forgot to tell you guys. Um, but so far that sounds good. But then also I was talking about the head job that me and Calvin did. It doesn't sound like it's broken. It doesn't sound like it was done incorrectly, which, is a big weight off my shoulders. Literally the next seconds after I had filmed this clip, we started to notice a large puddle of oil underneath the car. And this is where things started to take a turn for the worst. <laughs> 